okay in the previous uh, lecture uh, we uh, defined uh, what are graphs then subgraphs and some related uh, uh, notions like uh, edges adjacency and uh, and 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 uh, things like that right now uh, let us look at uh, a few more definitions before we go uh, into uh, applying these things we have, uh, let us say, uh, a graph G, uh, we denote by uh, V comma E. And uh, we have uh, a graph H uh, with the vertex at V dash and H at E dash. We say that the graph G and H are uh, isomorphic. Uh, they are said to be isomorphic. And we write, of course, uh, G uh, isomorphic to H in this way. If uh, one can find a bijection uh, between uh, the vertices, right? So V and V dash, such that uh, UV is an edge if and only if phi of U, phi of V is an edge. Okay. So what we are saying is that if there is an edge preserving bijection, right? So the edges are preserved in both ways, right? So you have the uh, graph G, then you have a you have a bijection from the vertex set of the graph to the vertex set of the graph H, and we are saying that whenever you have uh, let's say vertices U and V in the graph G, uh, they form an edge, right? U V is an edge. Then phi of U, the, the images, right? Phi of U, phi of V is an edge in the graph H. And if UV is not an edge, then phi of U, phi of V is not an edge. And vice versa, right? So if phi of U, phi of V is an edge, then we want UV to be an edge. And uh, if there is no edge between phi U and phi V, then uh, there is no edge between U and V in the graph. So if this, uh, such a bijection is there, then we say the graphs are isomorphic. And this map phi, which uh, does this job, right? Uh, shows the uh, isomorphism, uh, I mean, uh, that, that they are isomorphic is called the isomorphism. So, uh, there could be several uh, isomorphisms, but uh, uh, one of uh, such map is an isomorphism. So, if you have an isomorphism, then the graphs are isomorphic. Here is uh, uh, an example, right? You have the graph, uh, complete graph. I have, uh, you know, represented it in this way, right? One, two, three, uh, and four. And uh, I have a very different uh, representation of the same graph, but uh, with vertex, uh, of course, the vertex set is different, so I cannot say the same. But uh, uh, it's a, again a complete graph on four vertices, where uh, I label it with A, B, C, and D. Right, so A, B, C, D. But now I have uh, represented in a very different manner. But these two graphs, even though they look different, are uh, essentially uh, the same, right? In the sense that they are isomorphic. So what is the isomorphism between these two graphs? Well, uh, here is one, right? I can say that uh, one goes to A, right? One uh, is mapped to A by the isomorphism. Phi of 1 is equal to A, then uh, 2 goes to C, right? 1 goes to A, one goes to A, then 2 goes to C, 3 goes to D, and uh, 4 goes to B, right? This is an isomorphism. And one can modify it is an isomorphism by looking at uh, whenever there is an edge, 1, 2 is an edge, so therefore correspondingly what I want. Uh, a, C must be an edge. But now the graph is complete, so therefore all possible edges are there. It's a trivial uh, uh, isomorphism. So uh, we don't have to discuss it further. Now, here is another uh, 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 example of an isomorphism. So I have the graph uh, uh, G here, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then I have this graph, uh, let's say 1, 3, uh, 5, 2, 4, and 1, right? 
So I have this graph uh, Jiva. I mean. So uh, these two graphs are isomorphic. Okay. Now these two graphs are isomorphic because uh, one can one can see that uh, you know uh, one can see that there is an isomorphism. What is isomorphism? You can uh, you can just see like if you uh, you take one let's say uh, maybe I need to use a different uh, okay. one then uh, let's say that one is mapped to one itself then uh, two right so one two uh, and one five are edges. So therefore, I want to make sure that wherever these guys are going, that should be also uh, also uh, edges, right? So therefore, I want uh, two to be going to uh, let's say three or uh, four, right? One of these I have to do. So then, uh, uh, once I map that, I can see that okay, two is adjacent to three. So therefore, if two is going to three, then uh, uh, whatever that is, it should be mapped to uh, 3 is adjacent to 5 here. So therefore, whatever is that adjacent to here, right, 4 must be mapped to this. And similarly, you can find out the rest. So this will give you uh, an isomorphism and one can one can verify that it is indeed isomorphism. Now, uh, let us define uh, something else. Let us take a graph, uh, let us take a graph G. Take a graph C, and then whenever there is an edge, whenever there is an edge, I will I will make a new graph on the same matrix. Right? Whenever there is an edge in the graph G, I will say that there is no uh, that edge is not present in the graph G bar. Now, if there is no edge between two vertices in the graph G, I will say there is an edge in the graph G bar. Okay. So I take the graph G, every non-edge of G becomes an edge and every edge becomes a non-edge. Right? Such a uh, graph is called complement of uh, the graph G. Right? So here I have the graph G and its complement. And uh, in this particular case, it happens that the graph is isomorphic to its complement. It's not always the case. You, you, can, you can just see uh, very easily that if you, you take uh, some other example like Let's say you take this graph, right? Let's say one, two, and three. Then what is the complement of this? Like I have one, two, and three. Now one, two is an edge, so therefore there is no edge uh, between one, two in the complement. One, three uh, is not an edge, so therefore one, three will be an edge. Two, three is an edge, so therefore two, three will not be an edge. So I get uh, this graph, right? So these uh, graphs are not isomorphic, you can see. Okay, now the number of edges incident with a vertex of uh, a graph is called the degree of the graph, uh, degree of the vertex. Okay. So the degree of a vertex is the number of edges uh, which uh, is incident with that. Now, this is a very important notion. We will, we will use uh, it quite frequently. And especially in combinatorics, we use it for counting things and you know studying several properties of objects. And all. So now let us look at some examples, right? So you have this graph uh, drawn here, and in this graph, in this graph, I have uh, uh, I have the uh, vertex y. Let's say, right? If I pick y. Now, the vertex y has uh, edges, right, three edges, uh, which is incident with. You can see from the picture. So that is the advantage of using the picture. If I had the set theory description, you have to count how many occurrences of y, right, uh, as one of the endpoints. Now, here, right, it's uh, very clear. So I have uh, three edges. So these three edges uh, are incident with y, so therefore the degree of y is three. Right? Similarly, uh, if you take the vertex x, it has five uh, edges incident with it, so therefore uh, its degree is five. 
Similarly, the vertex Z has only one edge. Its uh, degree is one. Now, uh, if you look at uh, all the vertices, look at their degrees, right? You can collect them together. Now, if you look at the smallest value uh, among these right, numbers, right? So the degrees of each vertex, look at the smallest value. That smallest value is called the minimum degree of the graph because the vertices with the smallest degree, its degree is the minimum degree in the graph T. So I denote it by small delta of G, the minimum degree of the graph. Small delta of G is the minimum degree. Now, if you look at the largest degree, right, maximum over all the degrees, uh, then it is called the maximum degree of the graph and it is denoted by capital delta of G. Okay. So these two are deltas, small delta and capital delta. Again, these notations we will use uh, very often. So you should uh, uh, try to remember. Now, let us take a, a, a graph and uh, suppose all its vertices have the same degree. Okay. So then we say the graph to be regular graph. So if you saw some example of regular graph before. For example, this graph was a regular graph, right? You had uh, every vertex had degree exactly two, right? Two edges. And this similarly, the complement is the same. And uh, we have the complete graph, right? Uh, on four vertices. Uh, every, every vertex of this graph has degree exactly three. So therefore, that is also a regular graph. So regular graphs are important because it has more nice properties. So one, one can see those properties. And uh, therefore, that is uh, that comes quite frequently. Now, we now study the first theorem of graph theory. Okay, so what is the first theorem of graph theory? It's called the first theorem of graph theory usually. It says that the number of vertices of odd degree in a graph is always even. Okay. So you cannot have a graph where you have odd number of odd degree vertices. And why is this? The proof is immediate because if you sum over all the degrees, it is uh, always twice the number of edges. Okay. Now, suppose you have this, right? Suppose you have sum of all the degrees uh, equal to twice the number of edges, then the theorem is immediately clear. Why? Because if you if you have the graph where uh, there are odd number of odd degree vertices. Then uh, remaining vertices, if there are, will all have even degrees, right? So now let us look at the sum of uh, the degrees. Then you have uh, even uh, times something plus odd times odd, right? So therefore, I have an even number plus an odd number, which is an odd number. But odd number cannot be twice uh, the number of uh, you know edges, which is an integer. So therefore, uh, if I have this theorem, then I know that the number of vertices of four degree must be always even. Now, how do you prove this theorem, right? That the summation of the degrees is twice the number of vertices. Well, uh, it should be very uh, clear if you think about it for a few seconds, but uh, let me explain. If you if you take uh, you know the 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 graph and sum over all the degrees. So what happens? So every vertex, you are going to count the number of edges incident with it. Now, if you if you look at, uh, you know, in terms of the vertices, this is what we are doing. But now let us look at what happens with the edges. Now an edge contributes to the degree of the vertices which are incident with it, right? So if I take an edge, it has exactly two vertices incident with it, the endpoints of the edge, right? So look at the endpoints end of the, uh, the edge E. Now E contributes to the sum, right? The sum of the degree sum. We are looking at the degree sum. And in this degree sum, the contribution of an edge is basically two because it contributes one to one of the endpoints and another one to the other endpoint. So both endpoints contributes one or, or this edge is counted by both of the endpoints exactly once, right? So 
two times we are counting the eights. So therefore, we are counting all the edges exactly two times uh, two times each. So therefore, I have two times the number of edges. Right. So the total degree is twice the number of edges, which is always an even number. And therefore, you cannot have odd number of odd degree weights. Now, <clears throat> let us take a graph G and then what we do is to, uh, let us look at this example first. Let us say that I start from uh, uh, a vertex, let us say 1. Okay. So I start from 1, then I go to uh, 2 by an edge. After that, I proceed uh, to the vertex 3, then I decide, okay, I will go back to 2. Now I go again to 3, then I go to 5, and then I decide to stop. Okay. So basically I have taken a walk, right? So supposing that, you know, this, are, this is a road network, I can think of this as a walk, uh, you know, from uh, the point one, I go to two by, by the road, then two to three, then for whatever reason, I decided to walk back to three, uh, to two again. Then I go back to three again, uh, once again, and then go to five and then okay i decide okay enough of walking today and i stop so therefore this is a uh, you know uh, this is called a walk okay so a walk is basically a sequence of uh, vertices or sometimes it is defined as sequence of vertices and edges such that uh, you know alternate or, or consecutive uh, Consecutive, not alternate. Consecutive vertices uh, is always an edge, right? So you, if you, if you have v1, v2, v3 to vk, right? Some labels of the vertices, which form uh, a, a walk in the graph. If v1 to v2 is an edge, v2 to v3 is an edge, v3, v4 is an edge, etc. Vk minus one, vk is an edge. Now these vertices need not be distinct, right? You can you can uh, you can repeat them. For example, I, I as I said, I can go from v1 to v2, then I can go to v1 again, then go to v2, then go to v3, again come back to v2 and v1, right? So all these things are possible. So a sequence, uh, uh, you know, starting with let's say x, then uh, which is v1, v2, etc., vk is uh, said to be an uh, xy walk where vk is y, right? If va, va plus 1 is an edge for every uh, i in 1 to, 1 to k, uh, 1 uh, less than k. Now, if it happens that uh, the starting point is the same as the ending point, then the walk is said to be a closed walk. So for example, if I start with 1, right, I go to 3, uh, 2, 3, then go back to 2 and then back to 1. Then that is a closed walk in the graph. So here are some uh, examples. 5, 4, uh, 5, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, right? In this graph, right? 5, then 5, 4, then 5, right? 3, then 2, then 1, then 2, and 3, right? It's a 5 to 3 walk, 5, 3 walk. Similarly, uh, if you look, but on the other hand, if you look at 5, 4, 3, 1, 2, 3, this is not ever, right? Because 5, 4, 3 is okay. But then 3 to 1 is not an edge, right? 3, 1 is not an edge. So I cannot say that this is a walk because 3, 1 edge is not the same. Now, suppose you have a walk in which, uh, you know, I don't allow the repetition of uh, edges. Then we say it is a trail. Okay. 
So a walk in which no edge appears more than once is called a trail. So uh, trails are uh, you know walks where uh, you are not allowed to repeat edges, but you are allowed to repeat the vertices. For example, uh, if you want to look at the same uh, graph, uh, I can define the following trail, right? I go from one to, uh, or maybe maybe let's say that I start from, yeah. Three, four, four, five, five, three, three, two. Okay. That is a trail because three to four uh, is an edge, four to five is an edge, five to three is an edge, three to two is also an edge. And I don't repeat any edge, but I repeat the vertex three. That is okay, right? Therefore, we have a trail. So the trails can repeat vertices, not edges. Now, if I don't uh, allow uh, repetition of uh, any uh, a vertex also, then uh, a walk is called a path. So a path is a graph of the form, uh, let's say p equal to v comma e, where v is the uh, set v0, v1 to vk, and e is the set of edges, right, uh, is the uh, edges v0, v1, v1, v2, v2, v3, etc., vk minus and vk. There are no other edges. The precise set of edges is given here, v0, v1, v1, v2, right? So the consecutive edges form, uh, consecutive edges uh, uh, are in an edge relation, right? So if, then the graph is called a path graph. If, if this precisely these edges are present. Now on the other hand, if I am talking about a graph and then looking at uh, a, a subgraph which is isomorphic to a path, then that uh, a graph can have other edges, but uh, the path that we are looking at is just an, a subgraph of the graph. So if a subgraph of a graph is isomorphic to a path graph, then we say it's a path in the graph G. Another way to define a path in the graph G is to say that it is basically a walk where I don't allow the repetition of any vertex. So the, then you can clearly see that the consecutive uh, vertices form an edge, right, edges, and therefore, uh, since there is no repetition of vertices, there cannot be a repetition of edges. And then we will see that you have precisely the set of edges as we want in the path. So I get a path as a subgraph. Now, Suppose it happens that uh, you have a path, right? Let's say we want to, we, 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 uh, like, let's say one to five, right, in this example. And then suppose I also add one more edge, starting from the end point of the path, right, to the beginning of the path. So if I add the additional edge, right, then we say it's a, it's a cycle. So V0, V1, V2, etc., Vk minus one, if you have a graph, then I add the edge Vk minus 1 to V0, then I will get uh, a cycle. So a path together with uh, one more edge connecting the endpoint forms a cycle. So uh, here is an example of a cycle, right? So we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 5 to 1. Again, cycles also can be subgraphs. If there is a, a subgraph isomorphic to a cycle graph, then it's uh, basically uh, a cycle in the graph. Now, uh, if you want to define in terms of walks, you can see that basically cycle is like uh, uh, a walk where, you know, like where we don't allow repetition of vertices except for the starting vertex can be repeated exactly once, right? So I can come back to the vertex. So it's basically uh, a walk where we don't uh, repeat any vertex except for the starting vertex and ending vertex can be the same. <clears throat> now, for all these, uh, you know, walks, paths, trails, etc., 
you can define uh, you know uh, the measure uh, called the length uh, uh, of the walk so that the length of the walk uh, trail or path are basically the number of edges in this okay so we usually denote uh, the number of edges to uh, talk about the uh, say distance or length so <clears throat> so here we have uh, a path of length 3 right you have four vertices and then Uh, you have three edges, right? So you have uh, a path of length three. Then you have an example of a cycle of length four. You have four vertices, which forms a cycle. So the length is again the number. So therefore, the length of the cycle is uh, four. Length of the path here is three. Now here is a very interesting theorem. Uh, what I want you to do is to think of a uh, think of a uh, proof. I have given a hint here. So what you want to show is that every graph G contains a path of length minimum degree of G. Okay. So every graph contains a path of length. It's uh, equal to its minimum degree. Okay. Now why is this true? So uh, here is a hint. I say that, okay, let us start with a path of the largest uh, length, maximum length in the graph. Okay, So P will be the largest path in the graph. So we can denote uh, P by uh, some uh, UV path where U is the one of the endpoints and P, P is the other endpoint of the path. And uh, since it is a path, I know that all these edges uh, are, I know, are present in the graph, right? So you have a UV path, which is the largest path in the graph. Now, can we use this information to say that every uh, graph G right, contains a path of length uh, you know, equal to minimum degree? So here is, uh, here is the proof. If you uh, think about it for some time, you will get it. But uh, you can stop and uh, watch for, uh, think about it for a few minutes. But then, uh, uh, you know, I continue. So what I do is that I look at uh, the UV uh, path, which is the longest path in the graph. Now, since this is the maximum length path, let us look at the vertex U, right? Now, if, uh, if the minimum degree of the graph uh, G is 1, since there is at least one edge in this graph, you know that there is a path of length one, right? So if minimum degree is one, then I am done, right? So I have an edge, so therefore I have a path of length one. Now, suppose it is not the case, right? If the minimum degree is more than one, then the vertex U, which is the starting point of the path P, right? Will have at least some, some additional neighbors, right? Delta neighbors are there. One only one of them is present here. All the remaining delta minus one neighbors must be uh, present in the graph, right? So let us look at the remaining neighbors of U. Right? Where can the neighbors of U go? Right? I claim that there cannot be a neighbor of U outside this path P. Right? So this is the path P. And then I, I say that all its neighbors must be in the path P itself. Now, why is this? Right? So if I if I look at uh, if I look at uh, the vertex U, suppose it has a neighbor outside this path P. So if there is a neighbor outside the path P, then let me start from this neighbor, wherever it is, right? So let us say that this is X, right? So X to U I go, then U to V I go, right? Because the vertex X is not part of the path P, this is a path of longer length, right? I can go from X to U first, and then I can go from U to V taking the path P. So I have a longer path. But we started with the assumption that P is the maximum length path. So this tells us that this tells us that all the neighbors of U must be in the path P itself. Right? So all the delta neighbors of U are in the path P, right? Including the neighbor in the path itself. So therefore, every neighbor of U must be in the path. Now, the degree of the vertex is 
right? The minimum degree of the vertex is delta. So u has at least u has at least a uh, uh, small delta of the many neighbors, right? So now what does it say? It says that the path we are looking at, right? u v path, that path contains at least delta vertices, which are the neighbors of u, right? So uh, apart from u, you have a delta more vertices in this path. So if the path has at least delta vertices present, then the length of the path must be at least delta, right? Because you have, uh, apart from u, you have delta more vertices. So delta plus one vertices must be there in the path. There could be more, but there is at least small delta plus one uh, vertices in the in the path. So therefore, its length must be at least uh, delta of t. So this is why uh, every graph must contain a uh, path of length uh, minimum degree of t. Now, using the same idea, we can prove that if uh, if uh, minimum degree is at least two, then the graph has a cycle of length at least small delta of t plus one, right? So if if a graph has minimum degree at least two, then it definitely has a cycle, right? And then it says that the cycle has a length at least small delta plus one. I mean, there is such a cycle. There could be smaller cycles. But you have at least a cycle whose length is minimum degree plus one. So the proof is essentially the same. If I look at the maximum length path in the graph, right? So B, then as we mentioned, all the neighbors of U must be in P itself. Now, since there is at least uh, uh, delta uh, neighbors, right, for P, if you look at the the farthest neighbor of uh, you know u right so look at the farthest neighbor of u in the path right all the neighbors are in the path so look at the farthest neighbor so this neighbor since all the you know all the neighbors are be happening between u and this vertex you know that there is at least delta plus 1 vertices right so at least delta of g plus 1 vertices here there could be more right so now I have this path from u to p, I mean u to this vertex. But then, of course, because this vertex is a neighbor of uh, u, I can go back to u from this vertex. So if I look at this path of whatever length is greater than or equal to delta plus 1, that plus this edge defines a cycle whose length, of course, is at least delta plus 1, right? Because delta plus 1 vertex is here. We need at least delta edges, and then together with this edge, it will be at least small delta of j plus one. So, with the same idea, we have proved two theorems now, right? First theorem was that if you if you uh, have a, uh, a graph g, then it has at least a path of length uh, minimum degree of g, and then if the minimum degree is at least two, there is a cycle and the cycle has length greater than or equal to delta g plus 1. Okay. Now let me define uh, what is called the adjacency matrix of a graph g. So this is a way to represent the graph because uh, when, whenever we use computers and all, right, the, you need to represent the graphs in, in you know, some other uh, way. But of course, there are other uh, other uses for the adjacency matrix. We will see some of the uses uh, soon. So what is the adjacency matrix? So we have the graph G with vertex at let's say V1 to Vn, right? The adjacency matrix of G is defined by the matrix A is defined as uh, Aij of the order n cross n, right? It's a square matrix where the entry Aij is equal to one if Vi, Vj, is an edge. And uh, if there is no edge between VA and VJ, right, the vertices of the graph, then uh, the entry is zero. Right. So this is very simple uh, definition. So let us look at uh, an example. So we have this graph here, one to 
uh, 2,3 and 2,4 are the edges. Then I define the adjacency uh, matrix like this, right? I, 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 I write it like this. So I have this matrix with the, the following entries. 1, 2, 3, 4 are the uh, corresponding uh, you know, vertices, the labels of the rows and columns. And uh, what do I say? So ij is an entry, right? If and only if uh, va vj is an edge. So since uh, 1 to 2 is an edge, I have this entry. Similarly, uh, this entry because again, uh, 2 to 1 and 1 to 2, right? Similarly, uh, 1, uh, 2, 3 is an edge, so therefore this and 2, 4 is an edge, therefore this one, right? Similarly, for 2, right? And uh, uh, 3, uh, 3, 2, right? So these are the uh, you know, non zero entries, and then uh, the main entries are all uh, zero, right? So, therefore, I have the adjacency matrix. Now, an immediate theorem is that if you have the adjacency matrix of a graph is given, right? Let's say it is A, then if you look at the kth power of this matrix, right? So look at the matrix A and look at the kth power. Now, the power means that you are taking a product of the matrix with itself because it's a square matrix, I can multiply it uh, uh, many times. So I take A raised to K, which is the kth power of the square matrix A. Now I look at the ijth entry of this matrix, which is a matrix. So I look at the ijth entry of this kth power. The claim is that the number, the value in this position in the matrix R H k is the number of walks of length k from vi to vj in the graph. Okay. So the ijth entry is the number of walks of length k from vi to vj. Now, this is fairly easy to prove. I want you to think about this and try to prove it yourself, but uh, we can discuss it. So if you want, you stop and then uh, uh, try to find a proof yourself. Now here is the proof. So uh, we use induction on the uh, value of k. Okay. So the base case is k is equal to 1, right? Because I start with the adjacency matrix. And the base case is clear because ijth entry is defined to be 1, right, in the adjacency matrix if uh, vijj is an edge in the graph, right? So there is an edge, then it's equal to 1, otherwise it is 0. So therefore, uh, the base case is uh, clear, right? The non-zero entries are precisely when there is an edge, so therefore there is a, there is a path and there is precisely 1, right? There is an edge, only 1 edge. Now, <clears throat> Now, because of this, we can we can now use induction hypothesis. Right? Induction hypothesis is that the result holds for any value k which is strictly less than n. Then we do it for uh, n. So look at the nth uh, nth power of a. So what is the nth power of a? Right. So I look at a raised to n and look, just look at the ijth entry. That is only entry I need. So the ijth entry of a raised to n is basically right. A raised to n is a into a raised to n minus one. Right. So look at that a into a raised to n minus one of i comma j. Now by the definition of matrix products, what is the product of matrices? Product of matrices uh, a and uh, a raised to n minus one, right? A and b uh, is basically summation. Let's say m equal to one to uh, the order, right? I um, mean uh, of the size of the matrix, or whatever is the number of rows or columns. A i m into Right, B M J. But in this case, B is A raised to n minus one. So it is basically A M into A raised to n minus one M J. Now, of course, A I M says that there is an edge between I to M, right? If the value is non-zero. And then A raised to n minus one M comma J by induction is the number of walks of length n minus one, right? From M to J, right? Now, if there is an n minus one length for path from m to j, and there is a path of length one from i to m, 
then there is a path of length n from i to j right so since a raised to n minus 1 of m comma j is precisely the number of uh, paths uh, number of walks right uh, number of walks uh, not paths number of walks of length uh, n minus 1 from m to j i can create a path of length n precisely when right going through uh, this vertex m precisely if i m is an edge right so i am basically counting with this way right so i look at every vertex which has a path of length n minus 1 to, to the vertex j and then i see if there is an edge from uh, vertex i to m direct m then i can basically make an you know n length path so i can add this number so I, I just add them together. So all the non-zero entries will uh, sum to the number of walks of length uh, n. And that is the uh, proof. So therefore, uh, we can prove that the ij entry of uh, the k power is the uh, number of walks of length k between i and j, right, from i to j. Now, I, 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 I will stop this with a, a definition uh, of uh, what we call directed graph. So, a directed graph uh, is basically, right, so, so when we defined the graph earlier, we, we have said that we are looking at uh, just two elements of this, right. Now, in directed graph, we want to say that, okay, the order is important. So, I will say that I can have, uh, you know, a, a path from uh, a vertex u to, I mean, you know, I have an edge from u to v, but there is no edge from v to a, right? So I can basically, I, you know, the one way, one way uh, traffic, let's say, right? So, you know, from point a to point b, this road is, uh, you know, going from u to, uh, you know, a to b, but uh, you cannot take, uh, you know, uh, your vehicle from b to a, you're taking this road because it is one direction. So uh, this way, uh, we want to generalize this idea, then we can say directed graph. So, directed graph is a, a pair, let's say V, comma A, right, where V is a set uh, whose elements are called vertices, as usual, and A is a set of ordered pairs of vertices, which we call arcs, right? Sometimes it's also called edges, but we can call them as arcs. So, what are the, uh, and so what is an example? So let us look at uh, the uh, the given graph below, right? With the vertex set V, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the arc set 1, 3, 3, 4, 2, 1, 2, 4, 4, 5, and 5, 4, right? So it says that, right, 1, 2, uh, 1, 3 is an arc, so it means that I can go from 1, 2, 3, right? It's a directed. So in the graph, uh, representation uh, in the in the uh, as a picture we will also uh, put uh, an arrow mark to say that the edge goes or uh, starts from one and ends at uh, three so it's one to three with the arc direction right so similarly i can uh, have an edge from uh, three to four four to five and also i can have uh, five to four right because i i allow uh you know this multiple uh things right so going from four to five and also from five to four so therefore i have i have this graph right which we call the directed graph now if you look at the directed graph uh you know the the uh, the degree it can be defined as uh you know the we can count separately the edges which are going out and which are coming in right so the number of edges which are coming in uh, is the uh, in degree and the number of edges which are going out are called the out degree. So out degree is basically the set of all y such that x, y is an edge, right? So that is the out degree of x. Similarly, set of all y such that y, x is an arc uh, is the in degree of x, right? So usually denote by d minus and uh, d plus for the out degree. So I think uh, with this, uh, we can uh, stop and we will continue with further topics in the next uh, class.